Hey guys, I'm the Workshop Warrior, your go-to guide for random Blender tutorials. Today I'll be talking about food physics, food simulations so like soup, stir-fry, rice, um, like everything like that, you know, just food. And it's actually surprisingly fun to do these simulations. Yeah, so let's get into it. First off, stir fry. Stir fry is a really cool food to make because it's really easy and you get a rewarding result at the end. So it's a good one to start with. So the first step is to drag in some sort of image of food. Okay, so to start, let's kind of model a pot, like just kind of like a frying pan kind of thing. It's like really easy. So we could just add a circle and we could tab in edit mode um, and you can see it looks pretty good off the bat. Maybe we should add more vertices. If you don't like it, you can subdivide it. But I think it's pretty good. We can extrude it by pressing E, S, E, S, E, S. Until you get kind of a good stir, um, like a pan shape. If you don't like your bottom or anything, you can press Control B and you'll get a nice bevel. You can, um, yeah. And So now we have kind of a pan, though it still looks really rotten. So what we can do is we can delete the top face. And now we can add a solidified modifier. And now we can increase the thickness, maybe even make it outwards or inwards, it doesn't matter. And look at that. Now we have this really cool kind of pot. We can apply that. And now we can do shade auto smooth. And we have a really good pot. You could also press Ctrl R to add an edge loop around any specific vertice. Press G, Z to move it upwards. And if you don't like it, you can bevel it. Now, we kind of have not that nice beveled room. Okay, so now that we have the pot, we can go ahead and make it a collision before we forget. This will be where our stir-fry food hits the ground. So now, for the time being, let's press H to hide it, and now let's make some food. Add a cube, and now you can scale it down. Then, make a new material, and give it an image texture. Open up your image. Okay, so now we can head to the shading tab, and as you can see, our cube has vegetables on it, which isn't exactly what we want just yet. So, what we can do is we can um, press U cube projection, or smart UV project, or project from view, but project from view, in my experience, it tends to be best. Let's go ahead and give it a nice smooth shading, and now you can see it looks smooth. So, let's hook, head to the UV editing, because that's where we will be working for a while. So let's go back into um, pre-rendered view, and let's also turn it down the roughness until we get kind of a nice, shiny kind of food. So now, for the real magic, you can just scale it around, press U, project from view, and now you can manipulate the view UVs to get any kind of piece of food from in here. We could start by some simple baby corn, so you can kind of scale into that shape, keep it ultra low poly, um... If you feel like it should bend um, when doing the physics, you can add an edge loop, but I prefer, I prefer not to for baby corn. So now I'll get kind of that same angle and do project from view. And then you can see we can align it with this by pressing S, R, and G. And, and that's starting to look a bit like baby corn. There will be so many that you won't really have to worry about this. And yeah, so we have our baby corn here. Um, yeah, it's, it's looking kind of good. Um, we can tab in edit mode, shift D. You don't have to um, stay in object mode, just do it all in edit mode and you'll be treated best. So now, just keep on doing that with all sorts of vegetables and you'll be good. This was mostly just like um duplicating cubes, UV mapping, and pretty much all of that. I mean, it's 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 really simple. If you want something to bend, add an edge loop just like this, and then later in our simulation it will bend like um some real stir fry. So once you've made like a small assortment of food, um you could just kind of arrange it in kind of a way you'd like, and um yeah, and then you could press Shift D and duplicate all of it, rotate it. So, you can see we just have all of this just random food here. Let's show our circle again. And let's position that right above our circle. We can always scale it to whatever scale we want. And let's just position it slightly above the pot. Um, and yeah. So, the next step 
will be to make this a soft body. Um, no, sorry, I mean a cloth. Uh, yes, these will be a cloth. So you can see, they all just go in there and we have our food. But not yet, not not so fast. Um, you can turn on in, uh, internal springs and you can uh, go to the collisions and do self collisions and now it'll get more slow. Uh, but a lot better quality. Now you can see we have all of our stuff in the pot. Sometimes things like to walk around and jitter, and I've never been able to solve that. Even when I've looked at stuff, it's just been really hard. Um, also, I'm going to turn on a few things like ambient occlusion and screen space reflections until we get something kind of decent. Okay, so right now we have our stir fry, but what about the keyword stirring it? Yes, we'll need to add liquid and we're going to need to stir it. So for now, let's go ahead and hide our stir fry. So texturing is pretty simple. Um, we could just give it a new texture and then load in some sort of image. I loaded the image in and I got a pot. It's not that great, so let's just turn off the specular for now. You can always plug that in, like this into the roughness and that might look better. But we can play with that more later. So for the time being, all I'm concerned about is that we have a decent pot. The, it's a bit cursed on the bottom, something went wrong with the UVs, but otherwise it's pretty good. Okay. So now we will actually focus on the liquid inside. Um, yeah, I guess this is pretty bad. You could um, like select the face and then reproject it. That doesn't, that doesn't work real well. Um, but it, it works well enough. Okay, so for the water, there are a couple ways to do it. Though the best I found in my experience is to actually just do a plane. Let's, we can move it up and then we could subdivide it several times um but it, there, it, there's like i think it's like about this many times and then we can do our loop tools circle so it just goes into a good circle shape if you um subdivide it too many times this just won't work i've tried it okay so the next step would be to add a subdivision surface um and then you could add a dynamic paint and then another subdivision surface we'll probably want two on this one and just one on this one so, now that we have our subdivision surface and stuff, we could go to physics and add a canvas. We could set the surface type to waves, and now when effect, like um, effector objects, it will, it will be affected by effectors. Um, all right. So, check this out. So, uh, we could just give it that water material that we made earlier. This very basic kind of thing. It doesn't look good or anything, but we can survive. We can also do screen space refraction and then go here and just do screen space refract refraction. And now we have screen space refraction. So I might just move it down here a bit because we want this to be rather shallow. So we can just move it and get it to a water level that we like, scale it. And now you see we have a water, a, a good water level. So now we could take this and we could give it um, a dynamic paint brush. Um, we want to move that after the cloth. Let's see, um, we just drag it down here and then it will just work better. So you will add a brush and now we're going to just play it and you can see the water ripples with, um, with it. It's, it's not very easy to see, but especially if you do this, you could Let's see. Yeah, yeah, you can see down here there's like some water rippage, especially if you hide this. Oh yeah, the water's definitely rippling from that. Okay, so instead of Catmull Clark, we could just change this to simple. And I might just set this to even more than two, like maybe three or so, and we can give it a shade smooth. Now you can really see that we have just that, that water. And like in real light, it actually looks really cool even in Eevee. So I could just uh, show this thing again. Um... I might just do a little bit of material correction, like just turn this down a wee bit and yeah, it's like, it's not really much I'm going to do with it right now, but I'll, I'll give it like a cast iron texture and stuff later. This was just kind of a placeholder. Okay, so for our stir fry, the next step would be to model a ladle or um, uh, what, what are they called? They are some sort of, um... Yeah, yeah, just that's the thing to stir it around. Um, the word's not coming to me today. Um, yeah, let's scale and scale here and scale on the x-axis and scale on the y-axis, and let's take these and scale them on the x. Extrude this out, 
Yeah, it's it. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, I think we'll refine this a little. Um, I think we should actually do this um, non-destructively, which means that we use modifiers instead of just, um, like, plain stuff. Okay. So we could add that, and then we get a subdivision surface. And we, I guess we have something kind of decent here. Like, um, oh yeah, it's called a spatula. That's what it's called. That's done with me. Okay, yeah, so we could, um, move this back, and... Hey, yeah, that, that looks sort of deep. Whoa! That actually looks really sort of decent. We can give it a little bend here. And move these up. And check that out. Yeah, we actually have a decent spatula right there. We can give it a shade smooth. I might turn the thickness down slightly. And yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. We have a decent spatula. We'll need the texture a bit later. Texturing stuff like this is just annoying, but yeah, there's not, not much you can do. Um, yeah, so now the next step would be to animate it. So I just am going to tap into edit mode and just like um, move it right over here so that we can... Um, like, like what I mean to say is that the origin will be right here and we'll rotate around the origin. So, like, when we rotate this, R, Z, it'll do that. Which might not be exactly what we want, but I think it'll work. So now let's just go ahead and keyframe it moving. So, like, um, let's just press, I'll turn on auto keying, um, press R, play a bit, R, Z. Let's move it all the way around there. I think it's best if it goes kind of slow. You can see that's, um... There's just so much motion in that liquid right there. Um, let's also give this a, di a dynamic paint um, brush. So I have multiple brushes. So, now you can see we have this pretty cool stir fry already. So, for um, yeah, for this we could just kind of give it a, metal a metallic um, material for now. It's, it's, it's not great, like, um, but, but we, could, we could fix it later. So for the water, let's also, rather than glass BSDF, let's give it a principled BSDF again and turn up the um, transmission and turn, and yeah, that, that, that looks cool. And um, turn up the transmission roughness slightly until you get something where it's kind of blurred a bit under the surface. It, it really depends on your, on like what you want for it exactly. You can also like give it kind of a color. So like, and I could imagine like vegetable juices getting into that and then staining it some sort of nasty color. So, yeah, so, th so something like that. Um, we could also add bubbles with a particle system, but I'm not sure that we want to do right now. Whoa, the dynamic paint is really blasting. I think we should scale all of this down. Um, I think that would just, whoops. Um, Yeah, scaling all of this down, I think, would just be, um, and I'm not doing exact scale, but, but this would be closer to what would be real scale, so I think that would be, um, good. I might change the grid to 0 0.1. Oh, whoa. And, and some of the keyframes got messed up. I'm not gonna mess with that right now. Um, it's more physically accurate when it's like that, um, I guess, but I don't really care. Okay, so yeah, this this looks pretty cool. Um, it's actually simulating pretty fast too. Um, okay, so Steam, you can I'll have a link in the description. Ian Hubert is a really cool Blender artist. Um, and he has some links to Steam on his website, like just these like alphas that you can download. Um, and then you could import them as images as planes and put them over it, and then that adds so much reels. And I'll just import it real quick and show you. So I just imported one, and I'll slide it on over in here. I'll scale it up slightly. And now you can see we actually have like the steam coming out of it. When the um, I, the spatula goes through the steam, it's a kind of an abrupt uh, transition you can see. But if you um, if you keep everything like kind of, it, it'll work. The dynamic paint, it definitely is behaving really weirdly. I might actually keep it just for the spa spatula and get rid of it on the, the vegetables because I think they're like really making it go crazy. Oh yeah, that that just, that somehow that looks a lot better. 
The spatula also appears to be going way too fast because it's like all of the vegetables are going like, wah! It's like, it's like really annoying. You see them, they're like, just like flying out. And it's also really annoying what they're doing. They're just hanging her there and like, yeah, I wonder if I'm, but, um, I'll let set, setting the origin to geometry to help. Or, um, that's like this. Hmm, that might actually help. Yeah, that that helps. Well, actually, may maybe not. I don't know. It's good. It looks good enough. I'm gonna actually make all of these slightly smaller, and then duplicate them, so you have just more stuff. In our soup. Yeah. Oh, uh, no, no, not soup stir fry. Let's just make the whole deal a bit bigger. And that is what I'd call like good. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I think that's pretty much it. You could add a particle system for bubbles, but I don't think that's really necessary. Um, oh yeah, and one last tip to finish this cast iron. Um, we're also going to give it a cast iron texture. Um, yes, texture. But we're also going to tap into edit mode here. Let's just take this. And I'm not sure how well this is going to work, but you can really kind of um often just extrude something and... It'll be pretty forgiving. Like, um, I might just extrude one, actually. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I like it. Whoops. Uh, yeah, so I'll scale down on the z-axis a bit. And also, I had an edge loop here. Let's just move it down a bit. To get kind of more of that, um classic handle type thing um like this is staying in a weak mode so yeah so something another really cool trick is that you can select two faces press i to insert them and then um let's just yeah let's just um try subdividing them a little bit and then making them into circles um scaling them down a bit and then um doing the loop tools bridge um, oh, we need to dissolve the faces. This is getting annoying. Where is this? Yes, dissolve faces. And now I could do loop tools, um, whoops, um, loop tools bridge. Look, it's still not working. Okay, anyway, we could just select these and then do loop tools bridge. And, and now we have, like, kind of a cool cast iron. So now for the cast iron texture, let's just go to, um, withpoly.com, um, and just generate one, because I don't, I think we're going to be finding one on Polyhaven. So I just downloaded one, just I uh, Google searched, and yeah, it was good. So I just, you could just grab it and then um, upload it. And now you can see we kind of have our really low resolution, um, stupid looking um, cast iron. And that's actually kind of what we wanted. So if you don't get something you like with the prompt, you can do like everything else. Just with, like, a, uh, I'm going to give it like a 64% or something, um, like like a small patch scale. And we'll, we're making it seamless so that you can tile it just like this. And um, and now let's upscale it to 2K. Um, I'd say this is really good. Um, when you have infinity, everything just goes a lot faster. You have access to 4K and 8K. Um, yeah, so I have infinity. I formed a partnership with Polly. Um, and, and, and I have a link in the description so you could get infinity for one month for free. And yeah, you can cancel any time and it's, I, th I think you should really try it. I'm not going to use 4k right now because I don't feel like they're really lo like the longer wait time though. It's, it's, it's well worth it. Like, um, if I was actually really gonna do this for like a film, I'd definitely do that. So now, um, for the actual texture, um, I can do any of one of these, but I do matte because that's just kind of, you know, like, it's like, it's very bumpy kind of feel. It's like, it's sometimes faster than you'll think. And look at that. Oh, I want a roughness map too. Yeah, I think that's good. So we could just download it. Um, I'm going to still do just a JPG, um, 8-bit because I, I'm not sure how much I like this texture. And once you have it in your file browser, you just unzip it, and then in Blender, you can use Node Wrangler to open it. So just press Control shift t on your principal BSD app, and open it, and press A to select everything. And before you know it, look, it's, it's our cast iron. So we can do some corrections in Blender, 
if there's anything that we don't like about it. Like, um, hmm. There's some strange things. Oh yeah, look at that. I really wish I had upscaled it a bit more. This geometry also, something's a bit wrong with it. I think, um, it's just like, just in a couple ways, but, oh yeah, the, we have a cast iron that looks good. Um, okay, so, there are a couple things I want to do. I want to make it a bit brighter. And maybe pump up the contrast just a bit. Yeah, I, yeah, I like that a bit better. Um, I want to give it some more specular. And I'm gonna add the color ramp and the roughness because, whoops, um, because I, I want it to be a bit more shiny in, in some places. Roughness is kind of like a good base map, but then we could, um, yeah, we, we could play with these to kind of get it like really matte in some places and really shiny in others. And yeah, that that's looking a lot better to me now. Um, yeah, I'm gonna turn up the normal map strength just slightly. Or turn it down, either one will work. Um, also, I'm not liking this too much. It's just like being really... Fun. I'm gonna move this up because I want a th more thin handle, I'd say. Um, switch that a bit. Might take this and squish it. I'll turn on proportional editing so I could just make the entire thing slightly smaller. And this looks really uneven. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that that looks okay. -ish. So I'm just gonna add another edge loop, just add a little bit of unevenness. Um, because I think that's kind of what really makes, like, um, that's really what I'm going for in this scene, like a bit more unevenness. Um, I'll select a couple random things, like select random. And I could just move them just a little bit, like, without proportional editing. I don't know, maybe that just adds a bit more randomness to a scene, which I, I, I like. Okay! Wow! I like it. It's like, it's looking really good. Um, we could get rid of that. We could add some sort of background. And, yeah, then, then you have a really cool cast iron on. It's cooking stir fry in it. The proportions definitely are a bit off. Um like very obviously but like I, that's okay I, uh, this was a like i said this was more meant as a demo um we could just make add an area like down here scaled up uh maybe some orange like orange red i don't know turn the power up and now we have i guess what would have be a fire under here Oh, and uh, by the way, these are basically just like this kind of shader set, a mission mixed with like transparent BSDF with like a movie as, um, you could look up how to use images as planes if you want to find out better, but yeah, I, anyway, yeah, I, I, I really like this technique and yeah, so do the next one, I guess. Okay, so number two is soup, um, and yeah, it's, it's actually really fun to make. So this is just one I've made already. Um, so there are definitely a couple problems that, as you can see, there's the, the simulation of the actual fluid itself. You can see the soup isn't moving around in the most accurate way, um, which definitely, so far, I've not found a solution to this. Um, but I'd say it looks pretty good with the way it is. Um, so I'll show you like how to do this. Um, so the first step, I'm, I'm just going to delete what I've already added here. So I'll just um, yes, let's see. Um, yes. Um, so we have our ball and the spatula that stirs. The spatula is a fluid effector. Um, and so is the ball, so the fluid will just be in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all the inside of the ball, except for the top row. And then we're just going to alt, shift, alt, select everything until we get the entire bottom of the ball selected. I'm also going to just shift select those. And now I'm going to do shift D and then the duplicate and then separate it by selection. So now we have our separate object that's just that. So I'm going to remove the fluid, um, actually no, I'm going to change it to a flow. Um, I'm also going to take 
the outside and press F to fill it. Now I'm going to scale it inwards just a bit. I'm going to set the fluid flow type to liquid and then set the geometry. And you see, we still don't. Um, oh, all the keynotes on. Um, we still do not have our liquid, which we need to add a couple more things. So, number one, a domain, which is where it's, it's basically a box that will hold our fluid. And I want to keep it as, as small as possible because it, um, the larger it is, the less performance we will have. So, we can just scale it until it just like reaches the bounds of our bowl, and then we're going to set it as a fluid, and then the type is going to be a domain, and then we're going to set the type to liquid, and we're also going to turn on diffusion and mesh. And then you're going to turn the resolution up until it ticks, and if it doesn't tick, I mean, in other words, um, not be just a, a cuban, uh, like a, a cube anymore, um, uh, there's something we have to do. So the day, we need to take this and then go into edit mode, sh select everything, and then press shift N, recalculate the normals. Then when we tap back into um, object mode, you see we have all of this um, liquid. I'm going to start with um, 50, and you can see um, yeah, like the, fa the um, faster particle particles are moving, the more red they'll become. So... You can kind of just see that it's simulating right here. We're going to, um, let's see, it's, no, it's this one. We're going to disable it in both the viewport and the render. And then we have our fluid. Sometimes that just happens. Um, to fix that, you know, like, um, like, I think it's when you pause it and then start up again. So you can just set the bake type to on and then bake it. And then it will just be a little bit, but at the end, you'll just have your fluid simulation that's like really robust. If you change something, it won't change until you free the bake. So just one, let this bake, and then we'll texture it, which will be really simple. Um, I actually don't even need to show it. Um, I mentioned poly to make that cast iron. You could actually just ask it to like make split pea soup or something, or wonton soup, or any kind of soup. And then you can um, just download it. Um, then you can also extract it, and by the time I'm done, I'll show you just how to wrangle it in and get it to look better. Okay, almost done. Okay, it's finished. Yes, that looks really cool, and it's playing in real time too. Um, so I already have like the EV settings I like on. So I'm gonna name it this material. I'm gonna name it soup. No, it's not a soup, but who cares? Okay, so there's a principal BSTF. Frame it. It's just, and we can do Control Shift T, and then um, I think I. Oh ding! I am I didn't, I didn't save it, and I thought I did. Oh, uh, and that's a while back. I downloaded it. Oh, it's probably this one. Yes, split pea soup. Uh, and now you can see there's a major problem. It's it's green, but it's like that's like the average color of everything, which definitely is not great. So we're gonna have to set the type, the object. I haven't tried generated it yet. Does that work? Oh. Yeah, generated also works, but um, yeah, either one I like object a bit better. So I'm gonna set the scale to 0 0.5 on both axes, and now you can see it's stirring, but you know, even though it's not, it doesn't look right. Um, and it, yes, there's a simple fix. Um, well, before I fix that, I just am gonna make it a bit shinier because I don't have like how unshiny it is, just the color ramp and the roughness will do. Um, and yeah, that, that looks a bit more explicit, you know. You want to do that? I like that. What the was. Um, so it's 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 really kind of trickery, and I don't like to do it. But I can't, I couldn't figure out a better way to do it, like make um, it follow with the particles. Um, I, I'm just gonna type in the rotation Z number frame. Um, wait, hashtag frame. Um, slash some number. I'm thinking fifty will do. Um, oh dang, it's going in the wrong direction. Um, maybe divide by negative 50. Okay. And now you can see it actually looks like it's turning a bit, which I know, yes, I definitely don't like to do this. Um, I might do it more like 30 or so, so it goes a bit faster. But yeah, it definitely is not um, what I'd like to be doing, but, but it looks good enough. And especially if you're a VFX artist, your standards tend to become a little bit higher. So, you could probably, um, 
not a lot, not a decimate, a displace. I think that would really help it. But anyway, what I was saying is that being a VFX artist, like a 3D artist, your standards for graphics get a little higher and sometimes you don't think about what most people think of them. So. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think that makes too much of a difference. Okay, so yes, we did soup. Um, I guess the next one will be jello. Um, yeah. Okay, number three is jello. It's a simple soft body simulation and it's easy to do. Okay, so the first step is to add a cube. No, not a plane. It's to add a cube. Yeah, yeah, a cube. And now let's move it up just a bit and we can add a subdivision surface. So that way it's like non-destructive and if you don't like something, you can redo it. So you could just add like three or so cuts and you can see that um, Oh, wait. optimal display is um like you don't want that on so you can actually see um how much geometry you have so the next step is to add a uh, soft body um you need to add something for it to fall onto so in my case just a plane you can just do a um an easy collision and you could just move this right up um so now you can see we have oh cool yeah it's sort of jello like <laughs> um but then you can see it just kind of does that which um if you're anything like me that is just not um very desirable behavior so let's add just one more subdivision surface um like um let's see shade smooth uh, and then that will kind of round the corners um and there are a couple things you can do to keep this from doing this um you can do self collision which also makes it slower but like uh, it, it keeps that from happening um, at least to some extent. Um, it's also best if you could rotate your jello a little bit to like um get a cooler kind of effect. And sometimes, yeah, that's why you need a bit more um, um stiffness, but not too much. This entire thing is just like really hard. Um, you might have to turn the bending up to keep it from doing that. Um, turn the ball size, I might turn it back to like one or so, and then it will just like, uh, then, then, yeah, that, that's, that's a lot better, though I don't think five is quite enough. I mean, I'm, I think it's, I mean, five for depending too much. Let's just take that up. That's better, and turn, that's damping, I'd say. Um, it's just, it's just like thinking about like exactly, um, what make it more jello-like, and it's really mostly just, um, playing around so unless you're like really um great at figuring this out like um like you know everything by heart it's not very um yeah oh i just realized the subdivision wait it, the soft body doesn't doesn't want to go after that beyond an oh that's that would explain some stuff it's barely um working That's, that's, that's really, really weird. Okay, so, um, yeah. Say, fine, that many times, so dumb. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a lot better. So, uh, the problem was, is that, like, um, the things just didn't want to work. And, um, that, that only needs to be two or so. Um, I might sub try subdividing it one more time. And then you get, like, ultimate resolution. So, um. And yeah, so we have our jello, though we still need to texture it. Like, um, like, a, like a, ugh, that's pretty lousy. I guess the bend, we need some more bending. But, um, yeah, what you really have to um, concentrate right now is the bending. Uh, wait, no, sorry, the texturing. Sorry, um, I'm losing my words today. Um, yeah, so we're gonna just do a simple, si simple cycles. Um, whoops, um, I accidentally checked the open shading language and now Blender's crashing. So I'll join you in a couple minutes, I guess. Okay, and for texturing and stuff, um, we're just gonna use the render engine cycles because that's just better. We're gonna set the GPU, denoise. I just am gonna load in just a Natisha sky texture. Um, and you can see it doesn't look like jello. I mean, it, I, of course, yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna give it a new material and make it jello. 
And what I used to do, um, let's just go back here. Um, I used to turn the, up the transmission, um, and like just give it like some random color. And I guess that would work. So there is a better way to do it, and that is using volume, which is just like a lot more real. So you can just like add a volume absorption and plug it into the volume. And that'll look better. I don't like the sky texture. It just is looking really, really weird. So I'm just going to load in a quick environment. And then now you can see it's just looking a lot better. Okay, so I'm going to turn down the roughness. And and I'm going to turn the saturation to zero. And now you can see when we increase this, it can get it gets darker inside. So if, if you really don't like that, um, like... Sometimes that just really doesn't work. So you can add, uh, let's see, a principled volume. And you can plug that into the volume, and that could look slightly better. Um, so and it, it's it's really about what you like. Um, if keeping the density a little like um, oh the emission that looks really cool. Yeah, let's just make it like a green kind of emission. You could have a, some glowing slime, but otherwise, it's actually like I've had success with this in the past. So, um, it's best to keep with just that, like um the the colors and transmission. Um, so most jello. Let's see what color is it. Um, I tend to get red jello. Um, and you could really have it any kind of color you want. But um, turning up the transmission roughness can make it slightly more realistic. Turning up the roughness itself. Can make it slightly more realistic, and in the end, you'll have um like an accurately um, ray traced piece of Jello. So I'm gonna give this like a really lousy little material. Um, and yeah, so we have our Jello, we have our um stir fry, and we have oh I forgot what it was already. Yeah um yeah, but anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you enjoyed, I'd, I'd, I'd appreciate it if you subscribed. And, um, yeah. Oh, and also, if you're interested, I could open up a Patreon at some point. So, if you're interested, please let me know in the comments. Because I'd, um, I'd be happy to set one up. And also, yeah, and also one more thing. Um, I might be able to have some of these files, um, like on Google Drive that you could download. Though, I'm not sure. So, you could check in the description to see. So. See you next time, and bye. I really hope that you liked this tutorial. Um, it's actually, I guess it would be kind of a miracle if you're watching <laughs> into this point. Um, please consider liking and subscribing because I'd really appreciate that. It um, really help my channel out. And yeah, if you want more food tutorials, just request them and I'll see if, uh, if it would be possible for me to make them. So yeah, thanks for watching and see you next time.